of sin and darkness who love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king of love all kings of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live 
live for you, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
Impossible for 
Jesus is all I need. He is all I need. He is all I need. Oh, Jesus is all. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we love you and we thank you this morning because you are all that we need, Lord. You are all that we need. God, I pray today that in everything that we do, Lord, we will give you praise. I pray, Lord, that we would realize, be whatever it is, this is the day that you made. And we're supposed to rejoice and be glad in it. So, God, I give you praise this morning. I thank you that I'm alive to say the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that living in a time right now where there is a deficiency in so many areas, you're all that we need, Lord. And, God, when we think about it, you're all that we have. We, we can't bank on anything or anybody but you, Lord. So, God, we give you praise, and we honor you, and we bless you this morning. And I pray, God, that you are glorified in our lives and in this service today. I pray, Lord, that all the things that take place in our lives would just be a reflection of you, Jesus. And, God, I just thank you for people that are here with us, helping us, and people that are joining us, Lord, wherever people are, I just pray for them and uplift them to the holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen, and let me tell you, it's just such a great privilege to just be able to share the gospel with you today and for you to be with us in this place right here today, and we want to welcome you to Multitudes Church. We want to welcome you to uh, live streaming this is not new to a lot of you, I know, but we might have people that are joining us for the first time. So we, our church family, want to make you welcome, and we thank you because you could have been anywhere. You could be doing anything right now, but you are here, and so we thank God for you for doing that. We, we're we going to pray in just a few minutes because we got a lot of needs. You know, life's still going on. Just because the virus is here doesn't mean that life stops, but we're going to pray because we can pray, but there's just a couple of things I want to remind you. A lot of you, I hope everybody has, but if you don't know about Unite 714, for about five weeks now we've been uh, uniting with people all over the earth. And we have a prayer that we just include with our own personal prayer. It's not specific and exclusive that you pray it, nothing else. It's just we're praying scripture and prayer concerning people that are suffering, people that are serving, and and people that just need to be encouraged right now. We're just joining together, and we're including this at 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m. And just stop what you're doing, and you might be driving. I get that, but you can 
Stop whatever you're listening to or talking about and say, hey, can I call you back? i got to stop and pray. You don't even know what that alone might do for people. It might just make them think. So if you want to get that prayer, it's available right now. The first thing you could do that would help you not only with the prayer but with streaming, prayer requests, announcements, all that kind of stuff, if you have a Google uh, or a, an Android phone, just go to the Play Store and download the, the, the new Multitudes Church app. Or uh, iOS, if, you're in the, if you have an Apple product, iPad, iPhone, anything like that, uh, go to the App Store and download, just search Multitudes Church. You won't even get the whole word typed out, and it'll populate and show you, and you just download it, and, and there you go. You'll have it. And you can click right on the home screen, COVID-19. It'll take you to this week's prayer. The good thing is, number one, you can pray it right from your phone, but you can also share it. You can print it. And so that's on the app. But if you don't have that, all you have is a computer, and you don't take a computer with you everywhere you go, you can still print it out. So it's printable. It's ready to go. It's either in a... a PDF format or a Microsoft Word, which you can copy and paste if you have something you want to put it in or post part of it on a, a blog or a, a share it or you want to send it to somebody through email. Also, we want to tell you now, a lot, a lot of you or some of you have been with us on Wednesday night, and I'm going to tell you this. We are praying and working on something right now. We've been talking about it, a few of us that are here this morning. We've got something real special we're working on Wednesday night. We're not going to tell you what it is, but I will tell you, you don't want to miss it. And I think you'll really be blessed and encouraged. I know that it will, it will do a lot for you. So Wednesday night, 7 p.m., and the best thing you can do is pray for us. The first thing, prayer. But the next thing you can do is I, I'm, I'm on this thing about sharing, sharing posting, calling somebody, this may be your last opportunity to work for Jesus in this capacity, so you need to hit a home run here, folks. Share it, and not just our church. If other churches are putting out things that you, are, you, you think would benefit somebody or challenge somebody, you need to share it. We are told in this book to work while it is day. Night is coming and no man can work. And so please be praying about Wednesday night. And we look forward to being with you in a very special service we've got planned. And you just you go ahead and make a note of it. Before I pray, uh, because we're going to show something that may help uh, get your mind going here in a minute with a, uh, a video that I think should challenge you, uh, I want you to, during that time, I want you to pay attention, and I mentioned this a week or two ago, but if you have a pad or a piece of paper, I don't care if it's a napkin or an envelope, I really want you to have that handy today because we're going to talk about some things that I don't want you to just hear. And I'm going to ask you again in a minute, do you have your pen and paper? And I'm relaying this. I'm not asking you for me. My father asked me to relay this to you. So I'm just giving you instructions. Get it because I'm going to want you to... Uh, follow along with me today because there's going to be some crucial imp information in there and I'll, I'll remind you in a minute. So grab you something to write with and I don't care if you put it in a tablet phone, all that's fine. And also you can take notes inside the church app. I forgot about that. You can do that. But we're going to pray and we're also going to pray over our offering today and I want you to do uh, something that I've been asking you to do, and that is just take your gift, and you can give, and they have instructions. Derek puts some up there for you every week, and I know it's just redundant to a lot of you by now, but people are for the first time hearing this right here, and then all you have to do is just click give on, uh, on the top of the website if you're on a browser in a, a, a laptop or whatever, but if you're on the app, at the very bottom of the app, on all the screens, on the app, it's got give. It'll take you right to the portal. You can give online. I can't tell you enough. It's probably safer giving online, really, than it is through the mail. And I'm not trying to discourage you, but it's, it's secured that way. Nobody can tamper with it. It's, it's also insured that way. And we can't give that guarantee. Nobody can through the mail or whatever, but... 
whatever way you have to give, we want you to know that God is blessing people. God's using people. God's meeting the needs of this church, and I worship him for that. And I want to ask all of you that can um, maybe make sure that if you're around someone maybe who doesn't have technology going for them, would you help them out? Uh, either by saying, listen, I'm going into town. I can drop it off if, if the subject comes up. Don't go around like the insurance man and say, hey, I'm here to collect today. We're not asking you to do that. I'm just saying um, if you hear somebody in there concerned about it because not everybody is on the same page, and we don't want anybody to feel left behind or left out. And you can also mail it to 15301 Jim Calhoun Road. And like I said, all the instructions are on the screen, uh, given online, given through the website. Uh, you can do it very easily and be a part of this. We're going we're gonna to pray right now, and we're going to ask God to bless these, these needs that you have, that we have, and also other needs that, that we can't even explain that people have. So I'm going to ask you to do this, and I'm asking you for God. Would you pray with me, okay? Father in heaven, we come to you this morning, and we thank you that you taught us how to give 2,000 years ago. Lord, you showed us what it looks like because you didn't hold back at all. You gave your only begotten son. And Lord, we are still benefiting from that today. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would meet needs. We bind together, Father, because people are broke, trapped, discouraged, depressed, Lord. And I could, I could just keep going on, Lord, but you know our hearts. You know our needs before we know our needs. And, Lord, we just lift people up. God, we do. You told us that we, your people, can look up because our redemption draws nigh. And we know that today, Lord. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus for people that are physically hurting, people that are serving on the front lines, Lord, people that are leaving their children and their families to go work in an area where the infection is because they're health care workers or they serve in some other area, Lord, and, and they're worried every day when they come home. Are they bringing death to their house? In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, you would give them peace. I pray, God, that you would open doors that need to be opened. Lord, people, people just need help, and we pray for them. And I pray through our giving and our obedience that you are glorified, Father. And all the things that you do, we will give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. This is not my gospel that builds these walls between us, drawing borders that separate, raising flags of supremacy, empires of hate in the name of freedom. This is not my gospel that casts the immigrant out, pulling mothers' urgent hands from the cries of their children, expelling souls to isolation because of the color of their skin, their sexuality, the gender, the class, the nation they live in. This is not my gospel that spits on the face of God, lashing his image with words of rejection, warmongering, dominating the weak, diminishing salvation to a conditional thing, while hope lies lost and bleeding, weeping for relief. This is not my gospel that turns communities inwards, planting distrust in their hearts towards the beauty of difference, labeling neighbors as enemies and defining us by division. This is not my gospel with its eyes full of pride, when injustice is clothed in lies, when grace is caged, we face the great divide, humanity displaced from love. My gospel is love, who crossed the chasm between heaven and earth, speaking worth to all in endless benevolence. Love who sat in the dirt with the rejected, erasing their shame with the touch of acceptance, who reached for those society deserted, embracing the leper, the filthy, the hurting, 
Love who clutched the souls of his rivals in nail-pierced hands, holding them free from hell's vicious venom, declaring them brother, sister, cherished, forgiven. Love who tore the temple veil, divine grasping flesh, flesh clutching divine, crying, you are mine, precious mankind. Awake from your slumber and open your eyes to love who walked through the walls, crossing the divide with burning passion, calling for those who have lost their place, breaking tomb after tomb after tomb to reveal a world of eternal embrace. This is my gospel. This is the cry heard in the night of unrest, clutched close to heartbroken chests, crying, reach for me, reach past the borders, reach to the wounds that have torn us apart, plant seeds of compassion where malice has grown, throw your arms open and welcome the forsaken home, break down the walls that hate has raised, turn your eyes to the face of the shame then realize that it is mine, it is yours, we are one reborn and remade, let the stars fall, let mercy cascade, let the heavens pour, I gave you my all. I will give it again and again and again. I throw down my kingship, I throw down my fame. To be with you in the rejection, to hold you in the pain. You are not the outsider, nor a child of shame. Let the depths proclaim to the heights above that you are loved. I want to ask you a question this morning, and I want you to answer it honestly. I, I want you to make sure that you are listening before I ask you this question, because you could really be distracted, I know, and I want you to do the best you can, but I want you to hear me. And the question that I have for you today is, having eyes, do you see? Having eyes, do you see? Jesus asked that same question or made a statement referring to that. He said a, a couple of different ways. He said, but, you know, people have eyes, but they don't see, ears, but they don't hear. And I'm asking you this morning, having eyes, do, do you see what? is going on around you. Because if, if you can't see what is happening around us, around the whole world, then we really, really have to zero in on this, this book right here, right now. We've got to, folks. I hope that you're not here to verify what I'm about to say. God knows more than anything in this world. I hope you are not here to verify this. You know, a lot of people are, are thinking, I will say it that way. A lot of people are thinking, oh, this is just a bad, this is like when we had, and, and then you fill in the blank. This is like what my great-great-grandparents went through and so we have all these kind of things we try to associate this with, but there's never been anything like this before. And if, if the people of God, or maybe unsafe, if, if you do not have eyes to see what's going on right now, you're going to find your, yourself in a great dilemma sooner than later because people are, are trying to say, Oh, this is not anything, and, I'm, I, and I hate to say this, but this is even in pulpits right now. People are, are so hung up, and I know that our job is to encourage people to a certain degree. But, folks, I'm here to tell you this morning under the power of the Holy Ghost that our job is still to proclaim the whole counsel of God. That's why we pray prayers of encouragement. That's why we pray, God, we want needs met. God, show us how we can help us. But I, I got to let you know today that there's people even saying that this has no 
thing whatsoever to do with the return of the Lord. This is just something. It's not going to look like this. And I hope that there's not anybody that's going to vouch for what I'm saying now later because that, that will be a horrible time in your life, the worst. And that is that people will get up one day after Jesus returns for his church and say something, oh, that's not what it was. It, it, that wasn't the rapture. That wasn't the church. That was, that was just, uh, you know, a lot of people in high, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it could get real crazy what people will say. Because every time Jesus has come to the earth, or when he came to the earth, I'll say that, people did not, be, the, the people that should have promoted him are the people that persecuted him. Nobody believed him that was really part of his team, should have been. All the religious leaders are the ones that put him on the cross. Because they said, there's no way this is Jesus. This is not the way God would send his son. And I'm afraid, and I deal with this all the time throughout, throughout the week. I'm afraid that so many people are, are going to explain this away. And I'm even afraid that ministers are going to get caught up in the encouragement, and, I, and I've heard it quite a bit this week, and I'm not even going to call names because that's not, that's not relevant. What is relevant is that I think people are so concerned about consoling people and telling people it's going to get better. We're going to make it through this. And, and part of that is true, but part of it is not true. Some people are not going to make it through this. Some people are going to die in their sins. But some people are never going to recover. And I know a lot, oh no, here we go with one of those messages that I knew Opie would just, he wouldn't wait too long before he'd throw one out there. I'm preaching under the anointing of God today, and I don't mean that in a way where I'm lifting me up. I'm telling you God ordained what I'm saying. But he also ordained what would happen to me if I didn't say it. So I'm doing what I'm supposed to do today. And I'm, 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 I'm a watchman on the wall. I don't care if you're not in here. I'm still sitting on the wall. And, and what I want you to understand is there's always going to be people that so politically correct, that want to be so soothing and make sure we make, that they're going to be speaking in error to a certain degree. And this is a fine line that ministers, including my, beginning with myself, that we've got, we've got to be careful of this because this day right here, God is using for people to spread the gospel, to make his praise glorious. God is doing this. And so this is why I'm asking you, during this coronavirus season that we're living in, having eyes, do you see? Do you see what's going on? I want the virus, and this is where a lot of people is going to get mad if, if you are not hearing what thus saith the Lord instead of what thus says Opie. That is that I want the coronavirus to end right now. I do. My flesh wants it to end. I want people to quit suffering, and all, but people were suffering before that, but it doesn't make this any better. But if it's going to bring to a halt... People's thirst for God and search for God. God, use whatever you have to use to get people's attention before it's too late. Because brothers and sisters and friends, this morning I want to tell you that this day we're living in is a wake-up call for God to allow his ministers and his people to, to shine the light, hold up the light one more time, and say, I love you, I sent my son to die for you, and I want you to know this, that there's still room at the cross for you, and this might be the last time that this happens, folks. And I don't think God is going to, for a moment, I, I, I don't think he's going to allow us to celebrate Easter, like he did last week, celebrate Easter, and not allow us to celebrate Pentecost in a little over 40 days. I think it's not a coincidence that the coronavirus, out of 12 months out of the year, that we are experiencing it during the Easter season and during 
Well, let me say, during Passover, during Easter, and during Pentecost. I don't believe it for one minute. And people might say, well, you're just, you're, you're just really kind of reaching way far, Opie. You're, you're reaching far. And, and I want to tell you I'm not reaching far today. I don't think God, God knew this was going to happen a thousand years ago, and he put this in place. And so I, I started Wednesday night talking about the promise. And I believe that all messages are important. But for the body of Christ, folks, and do you have your pen and paper, by the way? You remember that request a while ago? You should have it by now. You need to grab it quick because these things that we're about to look at are things that God wants you not only to hear with your ears, but he wants you to write this vision down and make it plain and clear so that whoever reads it will run. The only way I know to do is just quote Habakkuk, write it, make it plain, because you need to do more than just hear it today, let it fall in the soil, and then that's the end of it. So I want to pray while you are gathering, if you haven't gathered yet, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Father, this is your book right here. You've just commissioned me, you've called me, you've made it a mandate to preach this word, and Lord, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, God, just to anoint me and anoint, anoint us to hear what you're saying today. And God, I rebuke the devourer. I rebuke everything that's going on, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would touch people that are tempted by the enemy. I pray, God, that you would help people to hear what you are saying, not me. I pray, Father, that we would see that this is seed, that it'll it'll either die, we will let it die in the sun, or it will cause us to grow. And all you do, Lord, let me decrease so you can increase, and I'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to tell you that I believe, because of what I just told you, I believe over the next two months that from now to when we see Pentecost, like May 24th, uh, when it's celebrated, I I honestly believe this. I do. I believe we could see a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I believe God is pouring His Spirit out, and I believe if people will see what is happening, see what is going on in our world right now, see what this book says, things would look like, you know, because here's what's so ironic if you believe in that word. And that's the only one I could use right quick. But if you could look back and trace the history of what the church or what would be the church, what the condition, what the town looked like, what the people looked like, the nations looked like prior to Pentecost, if you could look at that and you could, you could get an idea of what that looked like, it would look so much like what we're living in right now. Uh, and it, when the promise came the first time. So I, I'm going to talk to you for just a moment about God's promise that he gave at Pentecost, that they received the promise, but the promise is still intact. It's for today. And so the first thing I want to, this, that I'm going to ask you to jot down, You might not need this today, but what you're about to hear and write down, you're going to need this sooner than later, folks. Or you're going to need it to tell somebody if you don't need it. And that is that God's promises do not fail. God's promises do not fail. In the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 56, I want you to write that down, the reference. If you can't write the whole thing, I understand, but I want you to listen to this. Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. And this is why you need to write it down, this next line. There has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised through his servant Moses. Not one word 
has failed that he promised to his servant Moses. And you know, at Pentecost, this was to Israel. But if you fast forward several hundred years later, the promise of God did not fail then. He said, and you know, I'm repeating a little bit of this, but it's okay from Wednesday night. After he ascended, he said, you need to go. You need to go to Jerusalem, and you need to just wait. You need to tarry. You need to wait for the promise. In fact, Jesus said, it's important, it's urgent, it's expedient for you that I go away because if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. The promise, you can't receive the promise. And folks, the same reason people needed the promise during a chaotic world that was upside down, then is the same reason we still need the promise. And a lot of people say this now. They'll say, well, uh, you know, they received the promise, so we all have the promise. Yes, when you receive salvation, the Holy Spirit resides in you. You can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. You can't. You've got to, he's a convictor. You've got to be convicted some kind of way. That's through the Holy Spirit. But I'm not talking about, these people knew that. They had the Spirit of God. But they had not been baptized and filled with it. And so that's what God said. He said, that's why he used the terms poured out. I will pour out my spirit, Joel 2, 21. He said, I will pour out my spirit. He wouldn't need to pour out his spirit if you had maximum capacity at salvation, folks. So this is why we, in the middle of the coronavirus, we need to see what do we need to set our eyes on? What tools? God, what thirst do I need to have for what is going on? Because nobody has an answer. Nobody can control what's going on. That's why atheists are borderline praying to a God they even deny exists right now. Because God is our only hope. And God is our only source. And if we have the promise operating in our lives, then we are able to do the work of God in a great and mighty way. Now, I want to tell you the second thing I want you to write down. And there's only two more short things. God promises not only don't fail, can't fail, but God's promise does not, His promises don't fail, and His promise that I'm talking about does not stop. God's promise does not stop. And this is kind of where we get the title of this promise series we're in, the why part. It's actually found in Isaiah chapter 2, 32 rather. And I'm backing up verse 3, 4, and 15 because the promise was not just a one-time thing mentioned by the prophet Joel. It wasn't just mentioned by Jesus Christ, but it was also mentioned by Isaiah in the 32nd chapter. You ought to read this whole chapter uh, later on today, not but about 16, 17 verses, I believe, and you need to read it out of one or two different translations so you can hear every single thing that you may overlook if you just stick to one translation. I'm only going to give you three verses. And this is not only a, a great word for now, but this applies to the return of Christ. And later, God's promise of pouring out His Spirit does not stop, folks. Listen. He said, the eyes of those who will not see, who see will not be dim." And the ears of those who hear will listen. Verse 4 says, Also the heart of the rash will understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers will be ready to speak plainly. But if you jump down to verse 15, it says, Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. So the spirit, the pouring out by God, the promise of God, it's not stopping, folks. Even when the Lord returns on his people, his people Israel, God will still pour out his spirit on those people. And I want to tell you today that the second thing that I've asked you to write down, God's 
promise does not stop is the why question is answered in the 15th chapter of John. And if you don't get anything else, please get this. I'm asking you to get this. This is critical. But when the helper comes, listen, folks, when the helper comes, this is what Jesus said. This is why he said it's, it's, it's crucial, it's urgent, it's expedient. He said, because when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. The why that I'm telling you about that needs to happen, the why is because when people receive the promise, when we say, God, during this time when I'm bound at my home and I can't really go anywhere, Lord, I want to seek you while you may be found. Lord, I always thought that I had to be in some type of revival for you to fill me, or I had to be in an altar call. God, I don't want to be filled. I want to receive the promise right now. And why do you need to receive the promise? Because when you receive the promise, he through you will testify of God. Now, we know, folks, if we're honest with ourselves, starting with me, we haven't been testifying of God. We've been talking about how short people are in toilet paper, We've been talking about other things that do with money and economy and news and rumors. We've, been, we've talked about all these other things, but we haven't been testifying. And when a person doesn't testify of the Lord Jesus Christ on a regular basis, there's a promise problem right there, not on God's part. There's a promise problem. And, and see, a lot of us, and I keep repeating these things, and I know I do, but we act like it's a bad weather forecast. It's going to get bad. It's going to blow over, and we're going to go back to, to normal life. And that would, be, that would be so bad to all these people who have died. That would be even worse to God that sent his son so that we could have the hope inside of us that we could testify of him. We don't need to let this virus just be in vain. There's too much at stake here. There's too much going on. When you receive the promise, you will testify of him. Jesus said, this is why I'm going so you can be filled, not just so people can speak in tongues or, or brag and say, I've got this experience under my belt. No, the reason Jesus said it in the 15th chapter of John, what I just read, is because you, when you have him inside of you, he will testify. This is why later on the Lord himself said, you're going to stand before people at some time. They're going to bring you before ju rulers and judges and, and all these people. And you don't even need to worry, hallelujah, about what you will say because it won't you just be there because it won't be you speaking. It will be him, the Spirit, speaking through you. And when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost and you have the promise of God, he will testify through you and you won't even have to explain it. It will just happen, folks. So this is why we've got to seek God while he may be found because people, more than they need a stimulus check, more than they need their job to open back up, more than they even need physical healing, people need to hear Jesus Christ because I'm telling you, I believe the rapture could get people before the virus gets people. And this is why the church needs to be on alert on high alert, red alert, whatever you want to say, we need to understand the day that we're living in right now. This is not just something that's going to just pass us by that we can talk about like we do 9-11. Oh, this is the 10-year anniversary. We're coming up on the, the 20th year anniversary. No, and all that was, that was bad, and we do. We think about all these things, all the wars, all the things that's happened. But I'm telling you that we are in a prophetic time like we've never seen before, and God is doing a work outside of the church, and that means... You don't need to leave it up to streaming, brother. You don't need to leave it up to streaming, sister. You need to do all you can. This is why I ran and rave about sharing, about calling, about praying, about fasting, about Unite 714. You need to be shaking the bushes. You may never sit in this church again. I may never preach to you personally. And this is why we've got to suit up. 
We've got to put on the whole armor of God. We've got to walk around filled with the Spirit of God so that we can testify of Him. That's where you are. Having eyes, do you see this? Because this is what will go down one day. God's going to say, I, 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 you know, and I hope you're receiving this today. I really do. I, I really do. God's going to say, well, you know, I even allowed you to get to a place where you couldn't go anywhere. I mean, I got you as confined as I could get you without putting you in a straitjacket so that you could hear what I wanted done. Now, you tell me every day of your life, when you call it prayer, what you want done. I've told you through my word, through my servant, even through my spirit, I've told you many times what I want. And I got you in a place where you couldn't do anything, and you still didn't do that. You don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. This is why I'm doing all I can, folks. I'm not just depending on preaching on Sunday morning. I, I, I want to do what I can when I'm interacting any kind of way. And I don't care if it's no more than a phone or a computer. We've got to allow the Spirit of God to testify or people that's sitting beside you right now is going to go to hell. And I love you and them and my Savior enough to tell you that. We've got to do something. We've got to. We've got to have eyes and see. We've got eyes, but we don't see. We've got ears, but we don't hear. And God, in any moment, any moment the trumpet could sound, folks. This is why I'm disturbed. I get disturbed, and I, and I don't want to tell you. Do you want to know what followers and believers look like? prior to receiving the promise, like they did then. There's three things. Three things that they look like prior to the promise. Scared, spineless, and speechless. That's what they look like. Jesus was crucified, and those people that passed out fish, watched the dead come back to life, even Peter was granted to walk on water with Jesus. All of these things. But you know what happened after he died. You do. Scared, spineless, and speechless. So you can be a Christian. And I'm telling you, there's not there's just a couple of people in this place. But I feel the Holy Ghost all in this room. You can be a Christian your whole life. And... In a spiritual way, hell looks at you and says, well, they're a Christian, but they're just scared, spineless, and speechless. That, that's the label I wear. I mean, it's not on my clothing. and Nobody calls me that, but that's what hell says. That's what hell says. They see somebody that's scared, that's spineless. And, and, and they're speechless. Well, I don't want to offend anybody. Well, you, you, you're too late on that, friend. You know who's already been offended? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's already been offended. I, I don't want to embarrass my children, or I don't want to embarrass my friends, or I don't want... We go through all this stuff. Listen to me. Somebody's going to be in hell one day because somebody didn't want to offend somebody because they were scared, they were spineless, and they were speechless, so they didn't say anything. I went through a season one time when I went through hurt, don't want to get into that. But this is, this, uh, this is why I hate this statement. Well, I didn't know what to say or we didn't know what to say, so we didn't say anything. Oh, yeah, you did too. Your mouth might not have opened, but you did say something. And so, see, this is, what, this is where we are. Having eyes, do you see the why? Why did the promise come? And see, here's the good news. I'm praying, I'm praying in the name of Jesus between now and toward the end of May that the power of God, hallelujah, that it invades living rooms because you're not going to be in here, you see. That it'll get you on the way to work. Oh, my God, I pray that God just rains and pours himself out. You're, you're raking leaves in the yard or, or, or whatever, cutting grass. 
and God pours it out. I'm hallelujah in the name of Jesus. I'm believing this. I'm praying God between now. He let us see an Easter through this because the church has got to be filled. You hear me now. The church has got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've got to. Are you going to remain scared, spineless, and speechless? If I could go back in time to the story. And see, that's not the bad news. Because the good news outweighs the bad news. But the Bible tells us what it looks like. It says one night after Jesus was arrested, that this little servant girl was around the campfire. And Peter was there. And you know, Peter was the one that said, I'll never leave. Oh, I'll die with you. He had already began to just lie about knowing Jesus. But it got to the moment when they were carrying Jesus off. And the girl asked him one. She said, wait a minute. You look familiar to me. She said, wasn't you with him? Weren't you following? Wasn't you one of his followers, one of his disciples? And the Bible says by the third time, he began to rant and to rave. And when he did this, the Bible said that the rooster crowed. And at that time, the third time after he denied, that rooster had made his morning sound that he always makes. And Jesus looked back and when this happened, everything just seemed to stop. And the Bible says that Peter knew the words. He remembered the words of the Lord. And he went out and he wept bitterly. And he locked eyes. If he didn't do it physically, in his heart, he locked eyes with the Savior that told him what would happen. And they carried my Lord and Savior away. And the Bible says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. Stop. This is where we are, folks. I want you to look at me. This is where so many of you are right now. You are watching Jesus high in demand all over this earth. People are looking for Jesus. They're, and you know him. You know him. You know him. You know Jesus. You knew him when your child was sick. You knew him when you didn't have money to buy groceries. You knew him because you called on him. But now you're in the middle of a pandemic. And, and, and now, I don't know him. Oh, I don't know him. I don't know him. Oh, no, I don't know him. I don't want to upset people. I don't want people to get mad. I don't want people to get angry with me. I don't want to do anything that's going to cause me trouble. And folks, listen, listen today. God wants you to understand this. That if you don't have a moment and do the two things that Peter did, you're never going to leave that situation. You're never going to leave that situation of being a Christian that is scared, spineless, and speechless. I'm not going to tell you. It's the preacher's job. It's the evangelism team's job. It's everybody else's job. There's Christian TV. There's Bible verses. People get it. Nope, nope, nope. It's your job. It's my job. And what do you have to do? Like Peter, this is what we must do. The first thing you've got to do, you've got to weep bitterly. You've got to weep. You've got to weep bitterly. Father, it's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's not... The people in Washington, it's me, Lord. I'm the one that's in need of prayer. I'm the one, Father. I'm in need of prayer. I've been spineless. I've been speechless. I, I, I stay scared. 
I stay scared, Lord. And I need that promise to be poured out in my life. I receive it, God, because I don't want to be the cause of somebody going to hell because I was just scared. I was spineless. I was speechless. And the second thing Peter did after he wept, see, we don't want to repent. But I just don't believe for one minute that it is coincidental that the prayer we are praying about our land being healed requires first for the people of God to repent. When's the last time you've repented? Well, I I hadn't drank anything in five years. I don't care when you drank something. I don't care when you did whatever you didn't do. When's the last time you've realized that you have stifled the power of God from you testifying, him testifying through you. I, don't, I wasn't raised that way. Opie. See, you were raised that way. You went to a school where they talked about it. and you, They don't have anything to do with that. Do you know the people that received the promise of God on the day of Pentecost, they were, they were said they were ignorant, they were unlearned, they were people, but they were speaking in over 120 different languages. And... and And carnal, worldly people from those nations vouch for that. It doesn't matter about what you do, what you know, the way you were raised. It's what my God wants to do in your life. He wants to fill you so that you will be full of a spirit that will testify of Him. And Peter wept, and then the second thing he did, he went and did what Jesus said to do. He waited. I've been waiting, man. I'm ready to get back to work. I'm ready to get to the beach. I'm ready to go somewhere. I just want to go somewhere for the day. I'm re- I'm, I'm, I've just been waiting. I've been waiting on them to lift a band. All of that's carnal, folks. I'm sorry it's as carnal as it can be. There's a great commission in front of us. There's a great work right in front of us. And God wants to do it. You know, so many people... Didn't have a problem from the minute it was mentioned until now, waiting on a stimulus check. You waited. You already had it planned out what you were going to do. You waited on a stimulus check. What God wanted me to ask you today, and without getting me out of that shot, I want you to get as close as you can to this shiny, reflective forehead And I want to ask you today, and I'm not trying to be funny, but I want to, if I could look you in the eyes, I'm going to ask you right now, are you willing to wait on the stimulus promise? Because I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, when that promise comes, you're not going to be scared anymore. You're not going to be spineless anymore. You're not going to be speechless anymore. You keep reading Acts 2. You see how that coward at that fire turned into a flamethrower for Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, if you will allow God to fill you with the Holy Ghost and say, God, I don't understand it. I don't know about it. I think it's weird. I think it's crazy. I think I'm going to turn into a moron. You can do all that, but I want it, God, because I want to be what you want me to be. And the promise is still being poured out. God wants to do that today, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and do not fudge on this. Close your eyes. Just because you are at home or in your yard or wherever you are does not exempt you from being reverent to God because that's who we're talking with right now. So I'm asking you to close your eyes. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would do a great and mighty work in the life of every person that just heard your word, your truth. I pray, and Lord, God, this is so critical right now. We need to be walking around full of your power and your spirit. Lord, we need to be so bold but yet compassionate. We need to be so humble, Lord, but but seeking you while you may be found, Father. And I know the devil, Lord, is working on people to try to get them distracted right now. And I rebuke him in every home, every location, in the name of Jesus. All over the world, wherever people are listening, God, in the name of Jesus. 
I pray against him, and I pray, hallelujah, that the Spirit of God, Lord, you would pour your, show yourself strong, Lord, in behalf of your people. Father, and I know that the great revival, the, the, the awakening, Lord, that I know is happening right now. And, Lord, we may see things we never thought we would see outside of the four walls of a sanctuary over the next several weeks. I pray it. I ask it in the name of Jesus, God. And I pray, Lord, that we would just seek you right now. Hallelujah, God. Seek you right now. Father, I give you praise, and I pray, Lord, let hearts, God, be open to what you are saying, what you're doing, and the day. Let eyes, Lord, having eyes, let people see more than the economy, more than the condition of the world. Lord, let people have spiritual eyes to see what's happening. Father, so that your name can be glorified and people can testify of you before it's too late. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen.
heal the brokenhearted. God set the captives free. Now whatever it is, whatever it is, Jesus, all that you can, all that you achieve. God, we come to you. Take all the headache out of it. He can do it, but you've got to surrender to him. You've got to do what Peter did. You've got to weep and realize that maybe you didn't deny the Lord verbally, but you've denied him from having access. And that's just as wrong because he made you and then died for you. And all God wants to do is to take you wash away things that you can't get rid of and nobody can get rid of them for you but the Lord. And then he can say, you're mine. You're mine and now I'm going to use you to do a great work for me. I'm going to use you. You won't have to worry about being scared, spineless, speechless because I can fill you with my spirit. And it doesn't matter if you go into a church or not. God can do it, but you've got to pray that prayer. And you've got to tell him. You've got to mean it. I'm not just caught up in a moment right now. I know that I need Jesus. I've done everything. I've dodged it. I even played around. I grew up in the church. You know all the things. But listen to me. Let Jesus take it from here. You will be amazed at what he can do with the remainder of your life if you give him full control and access. You can't be a religious person. You can't be a person that just walks around with a bunch of head knowledge spewing out Bible verses. It's got to be a transformation. It's a relationship that you don't even have to advertise. Your life will advertise Jesus Christ in the cross. So will you just pray with me? Say, Lord, that's me. Everything that he just said is me. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord, he used the word shall be saved. So God's got a whole book full of promises. I preached out of it today. And there's no reason why you should live out from under the promise God's got. In church, this is your opportunity to say, you know, God's been dealing with me, but I, I just hadn't been verbal about it. I didn't know if it was just me because of all the emotionalism going on. I didn't know if it was just me. But I know that I need to do something. I, I need to do something. 
I need to humble myself. I need to weep bitterly and realize I've withheld my life from Jesus, from him testifying through me just because I've believed a lie about the Holy Spirit, that he doesn't move anymore, that he's, do, he's done all he can do. He's not going to feel. All, that's, all that's, that's just a lie created by the enemy and injected into churches and people and schools and books to keep people powerless so people can continue what Peter did at that campfire that night. But that's not what God said. God said, it's to you, your children, and to them that are far. It's forever. Until the return of the Lord, he catches us home. And then he's still going to pour his spirit out on his people, Israel. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So, I want you to know today, if you gave your heart to the Lord, if you'll just send us a message, you can call us, write, whatever you want to do. But if you gave your heart to the Lord or you're thinking about it, will you just send us a text? Uh, you, can te you can text uh, the church number, 910-276-9920. You can do that. You can also text, if you have received text from the church, you can reply back to one of those messages. You can message us through Facebook our website, our app, YouTube, you can do that. But we want to help you. We're not just up here trying to do something to get us by until we get back in here. No, sir. We are on business for the king. And we want to do what God will allow us to do to help people. And his kingdom come and his will be done. So we love you. We're praying for you. We really are. That's not just generic what I'm saying. We're really praying for you. And we're praying that Wednesday night you'll be back with us at 7 o'clock. Listen. This message is the best act of kindness you could ever do. God bless you. We love you. And if the Lord leaves us here until Wednesday, we'll see you at 7 p.m.